Hey guys, Rival X Factor here today with Rival Gaming, and today I want to talk about maximizing your frames in game with low rent systems. Uh, this is a secondary system I have. This is a GTX 460 with an AMD quad core running at 3.4 gigahertz. The most important thing to know is there's a relationship between your CPU and GPU. If one of them is not good enough, the other one's going to drag it down. So if you have a dual core processor and a 580 or 590, you're going to have frame problems too. You won't be able to run the way you want to run the game. So keep that in mind. I'm going to put a bunch of links in and we're going to do a bunch of work here But the first thing we need to do is I need to be able to show you guys the frames that I'm getting right now Obviously, I could see it uh, Because I'm running fraps, but you guys can't so I'm going to put render dot draw fps space one Fail because I can't spell render uh, So let's see what we got all right big green box, right? So let's escape out of that. and Let's deploy uh, what is acceptable frames and what is not acceptable frames? Unacceptable frames is 30 or below. I don't care how good of a player you are, you will never maximize your potential because your game is a slideshow. You're getting killed in situations you probably should not be, okay? 30 to 45 is okay. Now we're cooking. We're getting a little bit better. 45 to 60 is good. But what we want to aim for is 60 or higher. You want complete smoothness. You want a lack of slideshow um, because it, it, it makes you a better player and allows you to harness your capabilities, okay? So I'm just going to drive around here on Bazaar. I'm getting 55 frames, 60 frames while recording. That's another thing to note. Whenever I fraps, I take a 10 to 15 uh, frames per second hit because I'm recording, all right? It's putting the computer through a lot of work on the processor side. Um, the other thing to notate is, again, this is just a GTX 460. This is a $140 card on Newegg and Tiger Direct right now. So this isn't game-changing technology. I do have another setup, which I run uh, an i7 with uh, SLI 570s, which, of course, I'm going to get stupid frames with that because I have no bottleneck. So let's see, what, what am I doing to get 66, 65 frames while recording on kind of a shitty, outdated graphics card? So let's take a look. Well, here it is. I knock it down to 1680 resolution. The higher the resolution you go, the more pixels on your screen, the more stuff that card has to draw and put up. It's a lot of lifting, okay? But field of view, 70. And then over here, everything's on low except for mesh quality and uh, my AF. That's at four. The mesh quality and the AF don't put much strain on your GPU, CPU setup, but some of these things do. They, they strain your card ridiculously or your processor ridiculously. So again, this is for people who want better frames, not people who want to run ultra on a lower end or medium card with crappy frames. The way we play is we play per, for performance. I would rather have kind of crappy graphics but high frames than really good graphics and crappy frames because that's what gets you killed and when you look at these videos and, and, and tutorials I do when I'm in games killing people it's very very smooth you don't see a lot of stuttering that allows me to kill people very quickly and to put my mouse or my uh, site where it needs to be without fighting the computer if you're lagging or slide showing you might correct over here then to come to find out you overcorrected and you gotta come back Okay, that's the worst thing in the world. So let's take a look at a couple websites to get some better information and give you guys some hard links so you guys can dig into this on your own time. Okay, guys, now to take a look at the hard facts from GeForce. Uh, I'm sorry, ATI users, I'm not with you anymore. I used to be. I can't really help you, but I assume this stuff would transition over for your cards as well. So just hang with me. So what I want to go through is some of the big hits and some of the small hits, obviously, because there's things that we can increase in game to make the game a little prettier without having a huge hit on the performance. Uh, this first comparison is resolution, like I said before. You see me running 1680? Well, here's why. That alone is 15 frames or more. Okay, so right there, you're, you're, you're gaining a big chunk, okay, because the goal is to get to 60 or above while recording or just playing, all right, because that 60 is a magical number. Some other things that are big hits are the settings. As you can see in the 1680 bracket or the 1920 bracket, going from low to medium to high to ultra, that's huge hits. Um, I've got low on everything across the board except for a couple things, which I'll show you in a minute. So just keep that in mind. Things that aren't a hit, 
Texture quality. Go ahead and increase it. It's one to two frames tops. As long as you're north of 60, go ahead and play with these numbers. Shadow quality. This is another one I have on low. You can see these screenshots. They, it makes the game a little bit prettier, but it doesn't help you really. Okay. Another one is the effects quality. This one, that is measurable. Okay. So roll with a medium or a low. Again, it, you know, it, it, this is something you can kind of do without. It can really slow you down in heavy combat. If tanks are blown up, planes are blown up, oil tankers are blown up, that could really stutter step your computer, and that's not bad. So I keep that on low just to keep smooth frames. And the goal is to average 60 frames. Not to have a high side when you're looking up at the blue sky, but to average 60 in the shit, okay? Another one is mesh quality. This one has to do with draw distance. You can read on this one. I tend to run medium on this on my old GTX setup, my 460 setup, but obviously on my 570 setup, I run high, okay, because I can afford to because I've got two cards, all right? But running medium on my 460 wasn't that big of a deal because that's one you really want. So if you've got to pick and choose between what you want and what you don't need or what you need, this should be priority number one, okay, after you drop everything to low. Uh, the terrain quality, as you can see, you know, who cares how pretty the trees are? I don't. Again, this is performance-based. I'm not knocking the guys who run ultra on everything. This is for the guys who want better performance and want uh, a little more help in the game. Um, another one is terrain decoration. No, no real loss there, okay? Where we start getting into the losses, anti-aliasing, deferred, that's a big one. This is something that needs to be disabled. Um, this is the biggie. Uh, disable that. Now, what can we do? We can crank up our post anti-aliasing, okay? Because there's not much of a loss, and it, it, it makes things a little bit prettier and crispier. It's just a mild to, to slight performance hit. It's the best choice for most people who want to remove the eyesore jagged lines in BF3. Okay, so remember that one. So this, along with the texture detail, uh, is the first two that should go up. Okay, so motion blur, get rid of it. It's just bad. Um, you can read on why, but there's nothing good that comes from that. And the last one that we can really crank up is uh, this one right here, your, your AF filter. Running on two... 8, 16, there's not much of a hit, and it makes your game uh, look a heck of a lot better. And then, oh, last one, ambient occlusion, horrible, 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 disable the stuff. Uh, it, it really cripples your frames. So, you know, just by running a couple of these settings to off or low, you're jumping 30, 40 frames with just a GTX 460 or a 560 or 570, okay? If you guys want better gameplay... Try increasing your frames. Take off some of the bells and whistles of the game. Run it in cookie and cardboard mode, okay? Because that's what most of the professional guys do because we want high frames. Some of us use 120 megahertz monitors. We want 120 plus frames while recording. That is the smoothest, nicest gameplay I've ever had, okay, is running 120 megahertz while recording on 120 20 megahertz monitor. So again, hopefully you find this helpful into increasing your frames because it will make you a better player, okay? If you're going from 30 to 60, you're going to notice night and day difference. And the last thing to remember, this is just based off a of GTX 460. It's a $139 card on Newegg today, and it's something almost everybody can afford. And the last note is be mindful of your GPU and your CPU. If your CPU is lacking, it might be time to update that to a quad-core AMD or Intel. They both work great for this game. Uh, I'm going to put a couple more links into the bottom of the video so you can take a look at some other stuff, including the CPU and GPU graph, which will tell you what your bottleneck is. So if you are having problems and you've got a high-end CPU or GPU, this will tell you what's holding you back. Okay? Again. So now that we've figured out what cripples your card, your GPU, let's figure out what you can get away with in-game with a low-end GPU such as a $139 GTX 460 right now. So let's take a look at what I'm running and call it a day. Uh, I have mesh quality and medium. Again, that has to do with draw distance. That's an important one. Uh, Anti-aliasing post, that's on medium. And AF is on F8. Uh, everything else is off or low because most of the stuff doesn't really impact your gameplay and cripples or affects your frames too greatly. So again, this is Rival X Factor signing off, and hopefully this helps you improve your frames to become a better player.